just for a second, I want to get real uh, about, you know, we're making a project about climate change. And that's a situation in which we've committed ourselves to essentially a civilizational collapse and almost daring ourselves to get out of it. And I know that's not the way it's always framed, but I think that that's a pretty accurate framing. And we have a closing window of time within which we can actually act to avoid that collapse happening. Um, and it's insane. There's absolutely nothing else like that in the world that I can think of. And it's something that I think about basically every day. Um, and I know that our team, uh, once we got together and we started sharing and, and developing an understanding of what climate change was about, that's something that we've you know, come together on and, and that's what's driven our process forward. Um, so we gathered around the idea of exploring climate change and human psychology. That was our initial uh, position. And thinking about to what extent are people really thinking about the urgency of this climate crisis? And we're the last generation, you know, we, the, all of us, are the last generation that actually have the chance to prevent that collapse. And honestly, it's not something that people even talk about all that much. And I think we thought as a team that it would be useful if people had some sense of at least seeing a cliff edge, because that's one of the things that keeps out of our public conversation. Um, so we, we centered around this, this idea of climate clocks. So we created this installation that takes the real time clock and displays it over various cities around the world, because really this, this is a clock that ought to be displayed in public locations and be a central anchoring point for, for general conversation around the world. So basically what we're doing is we're overlaying a live clock over CCTV video or other video that's taken in a particular location in order to demonstrate what it should look like if these clocks existed there. And then our team, you know, our next step in our journey is to take this and try and make it reality. So I'm going to hand over now and let uh, everybody talk about like what part they played in the process and what the project means to them. Um, hi, I'm Idan. I came into this project um, because I am kind of a performance artist. Um, I do installation sculpture, but I also have a background in um, programming. So I was like, oh, this seems like a really cool experience to have. Um, and I have been recently getting kind of more interested in climate change, but definitely before this, I was, you know, part of the population that was like, oh, you know, maybe we should bring Tupperware everywhere. And that was a kind of the limit of like thinking about it. And so kind of joining this group and the first day just talking with Margaret Klein Solomon from the climate mobilization and um, her kind of stance of saying, you know, the scale of what we need to actually kind of uh, delay this catastrophe is um, a World War II scale mobilization. And that was completely something that I was just like kind of shocked to reality. Um, so it, it was it was definitely a very like these this past month has been a lot of just like learning a lot about climate change um, and also for me having a lot more individual conversations with my friends about it. And I think that was something that I um, never really expected how personal it got. Um, but as for my role in the project, um, I was uh, doing research on which cities would be most impactful um, to kind of show as our first prototype um, and also kind of designing um, uh, the kind of look of how they could look very integrated so that it seems like a seamless um, projection in the city. Hey guys, my name is Amek Ataria. I'm an artist based out of Chicago. And for this project, starting from the first week, uh, I actively took part in, in the dialogue and the concept. Um, I started with the prototyping um, and programming and coming up with ideas. And once we had like a solid direction, I focused primarily on programming and making sure that we can, we can have an installation. I was working remotely, but uh, actively, actively working on the project. Um, I am interested in climate change and a lot of things that I was doing were kind of brewing in my studio back in Chicago. So this was a great opportunity to kind of come out of my studio and share the same interests and, and same kind of dialogue that I want to have with, with people who, have, who are more involved in the space and want to do something about it. 
Uh, hi, I'm Annie. Uh, I'm a designer and creative coder. Um, so I do research on which city we should pick for the installation and design the layout of the clock at Times Square. And so since I knew people were talking about climate change, um, I've always considered that we should uh, explain the emergency to people and call for action. And after, um, but after the conversation with the team on the first day, I realized we actually um, need, um, need collective effort to make that change instead of just um, individual actions. So, and besides, and uh, for our uh, installation, I think time is a limited resource for everyone. So it's quite uh, powerful that we use time as the measurement to show how, Im how urgent the situation is. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for all the Q&A, guys. Thank you.